can wait to see and join them. The Royal Navy, um, and his, one of his brothers, uh, suffered to the end of his life from the feeling that he had not been predestined to be one of the elect. You have to wonder if your election is sure and certain all your life. George Eliot writes very well about that. Um, and that can be misery. Um, this I've also, like Stephen, had to work out backwards, as it were, in, in retrospect, not knowing any of this in my childhood. And my mother's family also comes from what is now, we understand the whiplash of the border um, of the German and Polish frontier. Uh, when they left, it was Germany, it's now Poland. It was Breslau then, it's Wrocław now. Um, but she, for innumerable reasons, didn't want to be Jewish, she wanted to assimilate. Um, and wanted her sons to be English gentlemen. You can be the judge of that, uh, <laughs> comrades. So neither of my parents wanted to inflict religion on me at all. And I, I think that the fact that I was baptized on a submarine of the Royal Navy in, in Malta, the most Catholic country in Europe, um, was because they both hoped to move into the middle class, um, which, again, you can be the judge of. So nothing was inflicted on me. I have nothing to rebel against in that way, no grudge against it at all, and no grudge even about being forced to go to Bible, as you say, scripture, very well put, um, classes at school. But I, I do remember exactly when I realized that it was all balls from beginning to end. And that was Mrs. Watts, who taught us the search of the scriptures class and also did our nature walks and uh, biology and introductions to flowers, birds, etc. When I must have been not much more than nine. And one day I remember distinctly, she said, um, good grief. Um, I wondered if you'd do that. Um, <laughs> check, by the way. Uh, I, one day she said, this very sad old woman, with perfect sincerity, it seemed to me, and, and in the hope of delighting us, she said, look, children, how the trees and the grass and everything are so green and verdant. Well, verdant, that's a, as you know, a pleonasm. She was like a pleonasm woman. Um, think how good that shows our Lord to be, our, our creator to be, because what if the trees had all been, say, I can't remember what she said now, would you take mauve um, or, you know, electric blue or something, how unrestful that would be to the eye. I knew nothing then about natural selection or about the human genome or uh, uh, the theory of evolution, but I remember thinking very clearly in my little corduroy shorts, that's bullshit. Did it all hang on something? Though? Yes, because the argument from design, it is impossible to believe in the creationist view or the revealed view of uh, any faith unless you will accede to the argument from design. Without it, all religion is essentially meaningless. No religion is without it, actually or implicitly. And if you know, if you could tell at the age of nine that it's much more likely that your eyes have adapted to the vegetation than the vegetation has been created for the pleasure of your eyes, you don't need any more. <laughs> now, I have since been, just on blasphemy, perhaps I didn't preempt, I've since been in innumerable places from Belfast to Beirut to Belgrade to Baghdad, not to leave the bees, where I've seen how <laughs> enormously religion improves people's behavior, which is the other excuse that's made for it. It may not be literally true, but it's good ethics. It makes people behave nicely to each other. I'm not going to finish that sentence. <laughs> Bosnia, Baghdad, <laughs> Baluchistan, Basra, Batam, yeah. yes. you Bolivia. do it. Shall we move to C? Yeah. yeah. Come on. There's, with people of faith, in my feeling, there's nothing to talk about. And so I wish it was true that we had a true believer here, because obviously it sounds a bit complacent for me to say this, but I have exposed myself to the argument a good deal. I have it with myself a good deal of the time. I'm perfectly certain that I'm right. And therefore, and, but even if I was completely wrong, utterly wrong, and there was revealed truth, and we were designed by a benevolent dictator, excuse me, creator, um, <laughs> who took a benevolent everyday interest in all our actions and supervised us from the cradle to the grave and beyond. In other words, if we had the great luck to live in a celestial North Korea, why people want this? I don't know. I'm an anti-theist, not an atheist. Suppose it was true, there would still be no case for a blasphemy law. Because the important thing would be the, the essential thing, in fact, and it would be true if one believed it, would be the right of people to say that they don't think it's true at all.
So I think the case, we could in fact yes, adjourn. Not not on. <laughs> no, you're not getting away no, no. that easily. Um, what, I, what I therefore want to um, But while ask... I'm profaning, I may as well do the whole fucking thing. Crystal, what I want... Coffee. Yes, no, let, let him go. Off you pop, darling. Bye-bye. Another of God's creatures. <laughs> What I want you to know, if we're going to have to deal with people who are religious in this world... Which we are. Devout, ...and devout people, and I, perhaps there might be some in the audience who will speak to their faith, um, do you know what it is to have a religious impulse? Do you, can you understand that? Have you ever experienced it? Or is it simply weird, somewhere else, I don't need to bother? You must, through your reading, have had insight. Yeah. Um, I've met people I consider to be morally superior to myself. No, that's not the question. I'm talking about the spirituality no, no. within yourself. Well, I'd, I'd be forced to think about it, let's say, by, by my booming. Um, I'd be forced to confront it by meeting people morally superior to myself, and braver than myself, who live in terrible countries or very dangerous situations and do and witness in a wonderful way for the rights of others. And, and are self-sacrificing. I don't, not, I don't mean the Mother Teresa racketeers and frauds. I mean hmm. people who really do it, and not the proselytizers. And, and I, they, when they say their religion, that, that religion is their motivation, I'm obliged to agree with that, or to respect it, and I do. I don't myself have any hope about death or any fear about it. Um, consider myself to be as, you know, a subject to the laws of biology as everybody else. Um, and I may be lucky in another way. I think I may have been born without whatever gene it might turn out to be. As with Mrs. Watts, I thought, no, no, no. Um, so who here has read Gary Wills, the historian in America? That's sad, in a way. He's a very brilliant American historian. He wrote a fantastic biography of Ronald Reagan. He's written a great study of the founding of the country called Imagining America. Um, he's, uh, he used to work for William Buckley's National Review. Liberation theology by black Americans in his mid-30s made him transition from reactionary Christianity to what he would call liberal Christianity. He's a very serious Augustinian. He's written very well about Augustine, or at least you have to believe that he has, because I can read him on anything. I've debated with him, I've learned from him, I've learned more from disagreeing with him than agreeing with him. He's a real scholar. When he writes on Augustine, it's white noise to me. White noise. I learn nothing from what he says. First, we must understand that the Bishop of Hippo uh, was above all a man of intense inward spirituality. I said, How, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You can't know it. You couldn't prove it. Mm. You don't write like this when you're making sense.